good afternoon. I am Andrea Chisholm with the Midday News. A special welcome if you're watching on OneSpotMedia.com. Accused gang leader Tesha Miller has denied ordering the 2008 murder of a former JUTC managing director, Douglas Chambers. In a brief unsworn statement before the Home Circuit Court, Miller this morning challenged the testimony of the chief prosecution which, witness, which said he ordered the contract killing. Miller told the seven-member jury that he's a welder by trade. He said the first time he saw the witness was when he appeared in court to give testimony. Miller said he did not send anyone to kill the JUTC boss. He also denied knowing about the plot, adding that he's innocent. Prosecutors are now making closing arguments. Tesha Miller is on trial for the murder of the former JUTC boss Douglas Chambers. He was shot dead at the entrance of the JUTC depot in Spanish Town, St. Catherine. Two men were arrested following the seizure of a firearm and several rounds of ammunition in Bay Farm Villa, Kingston yesterday. Reports from the Hunts Bay Police are that minutes after 7 o'clock in the morning, a police military team was conducting an operation when a premises was searched. One Smith & Wesson Springfield 9mm pistol containing 12 rounds of ammunition was found. Growing concerns from one local environmentalist this afternoon about the effects of climate change in Jamaica. In an interview with TVJ's Shamela Pullen, Peter Espute explained how the effects of climate change are going to worsen. With hotter temperatures, increased rainfall and longer periods of drought, climate change is a daily reality. But for environmentalist Peter Espute, this daily climate change reality spells disaster. We know that certain little islands off the coast of Jamaica have now gone underwater. Karine and Keene all have a base now underwater. And um, a couple of other keys across Jamaica are getting smaller and smaller. Um, I think this is probably the greatest impact for island people. And even so, Mr. Espute explains that the devastation in Jamaica is far less than what is happening in other countries, especially those in the Pacific. The, the size of the land of the earth is going to decline. More and more land is going to be underwater. Um, this is famously um, ex, um, an, an example, a famous example is our, our various island nations like Vanuatu and Kiribati. Kiribati is in the Pacific is beginning to evacuate its population and close down. They're trying to move their people to Australia or wherever will take them. The environmentalist wants Jamaicans to be more responsive to this tragedy, even as he cautions skeptics who still insist that climate change is not real. There are scientists and naysayers in the world who say they don't believe that what we are seeing now is anything special, that in the history of mankind, it's, like, it's a cycle. And we are now coming out of an ice age, and that's why the sea level is is rising but the truth is that the, 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 in the past the, this natural change was slow with climate change now this natural change is speeding up meanwhile the government recently launched an initiative that will see three million trees being planted across the island to help tackle climate change Shamala Pullen TVJ News as the health ministry ramps up its vector control measures, several mosquito breeding sites were destroyed in Standfast, Brownstown on Tuesday. The community is among several in St. Anne where suspected cases of dengue are on the rise. Crews from the National Works Agency, well, crews from the National Solid Waste Management Authority, RADA, removed several old items. Acting Medical Officer of Health for St. Anne, Dr. Tamika Henry, encouraged the residents to take responsibility for their actions. <laughs> we 
We just want people to realize that they have a part to play in preventing mosquito-borne illnesses. Um, one citizen at a time, we can win this fight. Because if we don't breed the mosquitoes, we won't have dengue, we won't have chicken gunya, we won't have Zika. And so the fight is a prevention fight, and it is for every single one of us. And we really hope that every citizen of Jamaica will take it seriously and start to increase what they're doing to prevent mosquito-borne illnesses. While other methods such as fogging may help to reduce the spread of dengue, Dr. Henry says preventative measures are more effective. While fogging is important, the emergency measure, it is not the thing that we consider to be the most important. Because when we fog and we hit down an adult female mosquito, this mosquito throughout its lifetime could have hatched up to 1,200 eggs. And so what we're concerned about is those 1,200 eggs that are there or those 1,200 different mosquitoes that can emerge as flying adults. The community in Brownstown is the first to benefit from the cleanup campaign from the, by the NSWMA and the Health Ministry. The Portland Police have disclosed that a comprehensive assessment has started on the four Haitians who arrived by boat yesterday. Deputy Superintendent of the Portland Police Division, Troyville Houghton, says it includes medical, immigration and security checks. The four Haitians were found aboard a boat which had mechanical problems and was drifting in Jamaican waters. They were initially taken to the Errol Flynn Marina but were later quarantined. DSP Houghton says the assessment will help to get as much information as possible. Well, we wait on the health department to say what has come back from the various tests. The immigration will be conducting further processes that might be a bit more extended. So we run concurrently the 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 our investigations and away the immigration we we want to know under what circumstances they really were there why they would be in our space what it is that they were carrying on the vessels and it's time for a break here on the midday news but stay with us more stories right after these messages Welcome back and we're continuing the news. Over $20 million is being spent by the Tourism Enhancement Fund TEF to uplift the community of Flanker St. James. Councillor for the Montego Bay Northeast Division Charles Sinclair says the improvements will be twofold. One will look at the economics of the community and the other will examine social integration. Mr. Sinclair says they will be looking more at the food services aspect of tourism. It, I'm certain, will become a rest stop um, that will be approved by the, the tourism um, ministry in respect to persons who walk past this particular area. You have food vendors here. You have a gentleman who is here presently who is doing idle food, which, you know, that, that is a part of what is being promoted, gastronomy, by the Ministry of Tourism. And for our guests to participate in um, foods that are prepared the Jamaican way. The councillor also noted that a number of facilities are being constructed to include netball and basketball courts, as well as a football field. He's hoping the project will be a catalyst for change. And you also have situations where there is social friction, friction between residents that have led to, in some instances, um, violent outbursts, murders and so forth. Well, over the past few years, we have had a decrease in that. But I believe that improving the amenities here will also allow for greater interaction of the residents from the various parts of this community. Well, it's going to help the Flanka community provide more work for some of the people in Flanka, not all. Especially the football field, it's going to do a lot for it. Because these guys will cook and a lot of folks will come in and partake and provide a lot more income for some of these folks in Planka. The two-year-old boy whose mother appealed for help to buy shoes so he could walk has received donations. Since TVJ News highlighted Xavier Waldron's story of several medical complaints after being born with hydrocephaly or water in the brain, persons have given his mother money. They donated to the Linstead Community Development Committee anonymously, and while grateful, Lisa Richard says she's most excited about getting the shoes. 
skin is ankles because his ankle is fist and whenever he's trying to step or walk, the ankles are twisting. So I'm happy that he got the shoes that he will be able to step better without the ankle twisting. Meanwhile, the Linstead CDC says many more persons have been coming forward with various needs. We are asking anyone, just come to the CDC, can make a donation, and we'll put it together, and we'll be able, better able to help all those who come to us for help. In news overseas, protesters in Hong Kong will be holding a celebratory pro-U.S. rally today after President Donald Trump gave them what one prominent activist termed a timely Thanksgiving present. We have more from the CNN. Now, he says the bill was enacted in the hope that leaders and representatives of China and Hong Kong will be able to amicably settle their differences and bring long-term peace and prosperity for all. The act is seen as a boost for Hong Kong's pro-democracy protesters and a challenge to the Chinese government at a time of strained U.S.-China relations. Earlier this week, China said there will be consequences if Trump were to sign the bill into law. I wonder what that will mean for the trade efforts with China. And, and, and it was that. also earlier this week that Trump was saying, hey, we're just on the verge of exactly. phase one of our big trade deal, which he says might be one of the biggest ever in the history of trade deals. Yeah, now suddenly Bill expressing support for Hong Kong protesters. Uh, let's see what the reaction would be from Beijing. We'll keep on top of the story as soon as there is more. We shall bring it to you. And in sports, Jamaica's track and field athletes have dominated the nominations for the RGR Gleaner Sports Foundation National Sports Awards with 11 of the 14 shortlisted candidates across two categories. World 100-meter champion Shellen Fraser-Price leads a list of nine candidates nominated for the Sportswoman of the Year Award, with reigning Sportswoman of the Year Alia Atkinson the only nominee outside track and field. The other nominees are Rochelle Clayton, Natoya Gould, Sharika Jackson, Shanika Ricketts, Daniel Thomas Dodd, and we're waiting for them to come up, Elaine Thompson, and Daniel Williams. And the nominees for the Sportsman of the Year Award are World Long Jump Champion Tajay Gale, Caribbean Number no. 1 Squash Player Chris Binney, Discus Throwers, Frederick Dakers, and Travis Smichael and Diver Yona Knight Wisdom. The list of nominees were announced this morning at the awards lunch at the launch at the Jamaica Pegasus Hotel in Kingston. The RGR Gleaner Sports Foundation National Sports Awards Gala will be held on January 17, 2020. A maiden test century from Barbadian Shamar Brooks highlighted the second day of the one-off test between the West Indies and Afghanistan with the Caribbean men in a commanding position at the stumps. Resuming the day at 68 for two in response to Afghanistan's first inning score of 187, the West Indies got dismissed for 277 with Brooks top scoring with 111. Jamaican John Campbell also scored his maiden test half century as he added 25 runs to his overnight 30, while Shane Dorich scored 42. Amir Hamza bagged 5 for 75 for Afghanistan, while Rashid Khan claimed 3 for 114, and Zahir Khan 2 for 53. With a deficit of 90 runs, Afghanistan reached stumps at 109 for 7. Javed Amadi has once again top scored with a 62 as Rakeem Cornwall and Roston Chase have both taken three wickets. And that's the Midday News. I'm Andrea Chisholm. Join us at 7 for the Primetime News Package. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, good afternoon.